Today on Lockdown Red Wings, 30 minutes of quiet sobbing. You're Locked On Red Wings, your daily podcast on the Detroit Red Wings. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, welcome back to the Locked On Red Wings podcast. We are your hosts, Brian Fisher and Scotty Bentley. Scotty is also host at Locked On Tigers. We want to thank you guys for making us your first listen every single day. Uh, you can We are free and available on all platforms. I almost said the... Uh, the ending one again. Now make your second listen, Locked On Bets. <laughs> you like doing that. Yeah, well, it's because they, they all they both start with the same sentence. Yeah, true. true. Uh, we are free and available on all platforms, including YouTube. And we can keep hammering that every single day. Just like the podcast, every single day. Please pow, go pow, to YouTube pow. and subscribe. Yes. We, we love that. The growth there in, in like less than a month's time still is been 111. Unbelievable. Yeah, unbelievable growth there. And we, we want to we keep it rolling. And those of you who have uh, rated us on Spotify, appreciate it. We're up to a 4.6 star rating. Um, closing in on Scotty's 4.9. We're going to we're gonna catch up to that real quick. The Tigers one, yeah. Well, now that you said that, people are going to go give it a one. Just yeah, to they're going to go me. tank us. <laughs> yeah. um, lots to talk about today. Uh, first and foremost, we're going to talk about the Winnipeg Jets game and how it was an absolute dud. Do we have to? I feel like it's just common courtesy to like we previewed. We're it only giving it a segment. I don't care. Wait, we're only giving it one segment <laughs> because we don't want to. Uh, Dylan Larkin was named to the All Star team, and we want to talk about that and the rest of the All Star team, including the uh, last man in, uh, what the unis look like, stuff like that. And then segment three, we're going to be talking uh, Sabers preview because that's the game on Saturday. So since there's no Saturday episode, we'll preview it for today. Today's episode on Friday. So Scotty, without further ado. Uh, Red Wings lose three to nothing for to make it a now four game losing streak. Yep. Uh, this one was at Not home, great. and uh, despite the shot count being even, the team looked bad again. Yeah, it, they really did. Um, <laughs> they they looked good in the face off circle. That was noticeable, like the entire game for some reason. Are you trying to get a sponsor right I now? I am. <laughs> <laughs> um, that that was pretty noticeable. I mean, we we really did, uh, uh, you know, not not utter domination or anything, but we were winning most faceoffs, which is you know nice. Um, but it's 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 one of those things where even when you have a decent shot total, like not too many of those shots where you holding your breath, like oh that's a good opportunity, and I and I know, look. I I have said in the past, and I will be the the first to say I I just wanted shots because <laughs> there, we, there was a little bit there where where we we were we weren't even doing that. So I'm I'm glad that the shot total went up, but it was it was such a like a dull 33 shot attempts that halfway through the third when we had like 26. I, I, I remember looking at the, the thing on the TV that had the shot totals and, and being confused and being like, where like I, I've watched this entire game. I, I have no clue where these, these 26 at the time shots are, uh, are coming from. And then we, we got a little bit of help there with, uh, with the three man advantage for over a minute. At the end of the game, got us a couple of shots on that too. But um, it, it th <laughs> the three man advantage where we got scored on. R well, we got scored on on the two man. Uh, oh, the yes. three man we actually got through clean. It was still that power play, but they got they got their fourth man back like a minute and fifteen into it. Um, regardless, it, it really outside of. I mean, I, I can count on one hand probably the shot attempts that I was actually like, oh, my goodness. <laughs> like, like, there was a nice little Larkin play where he, he uh, cut through the defense really, really nicely, had a nice little deke, perfect, like, beautiful opportunity, just him and the goalie right in front of the net. And uh, I, I believe he hit him in the face. I think that's the one where he hit him in – like the the bottom flap of the mask and his he he shot it so hard that his the goalie's mask just completely fell off his head. 
Uh, and then there was a little bit of antics there. The puck, the play got called dead, obviously, because the goalie's mask fell off. And then, uh, and then the puck was frozen. and Well, not frozen, but then the puck was sitting next to the net. And Larkin, like, tapped it. Like, <laughs> kind of like, oh, I'm going to try and score, even though the play's dead. And two, two or three, maybe even, Jets players immediately swarmed Larkin and and Bert had to come over and Larkin just kind of like slowly skated away. It was like, I'm not entertaining this nonsense. Not my job anymore. Uh, and yeah, and then a bunch of other people like came in and got in the middle of it, which is kind of funny. But yeah, no, like the, the offense, again, while I'm glad we're getting shots on net, that's a start. Um, not too many good sh- like quality shots on that where you actually thought that something might have come of it. It, it kind of just seemed like, they, they looked at the shot totals the last few games and were like, you know what? <laughs> Let's raise this number up no matter how bad the opportunity is. And uh, and I, I guess I'll, I'll if it's a step in the in a, the right direction, I guess I'll take it. But um, for this game, at least it, it, it really we the, Winnipeg really did outplay us, uh, even though the, the shot totals are what they are. Yeah, the. Shot totals is encouraging to see them take more shots. But while you were you're talking there, I had like a website up with the shot totals and the locations at. Only I think I counted eight shots in that entire game we're taking from within the slot. Yeah, and you that know we were, about right. we were being overly we were being critical uh, this week about Jeff Blashill hammering home the scoring chances over the shot attempts. And how sometimes it goes too far, and that the team needs to take more shots because you never know what's going to happen. This went too far in the opposite direction. In truth, Scotty, the, 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 the truth lies somewhere in the middle. You know, take, sometimes you need to take shots to create opportunities, but don't, you know, wait too much and lose an opportunity because you want the perfect one. You know, you got to be able to take a lot of shots, but you also got to create scoring chances by doing so. And I know it's like kind of asking for your cake and eating it too, but that's what the really good hockey teams do. You either overtune yourself too much to the point where you're not taking uh, shots at all because you're waiting for the perfect opportunity or you just take all, you know, no holds bar approach and take shots. Cause they took a lot. They, like you said, they had 33 shots in the game and they all came from, you know, outside the slot along the boards, high in the blue line. I mean, and also three or four of those uh, grade a opportunities inside the slot came from Dylan Larkin who had eight shots in this game. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, there are some good things to point out in this game. Like, the top line played well again. Bertuzzi had four shots. Larkin had eight shots, which is a ton. Um, Sider had four shots himself. Uh, and Nedeljkovic played great again. He had a 9.35 save percentage in this game. I mean, just another game where it's it's 2 nothing because Nedeljkovic is insane. Yeah, absolutely. No, it, it, wasn't, uh, it wasn't a horrible team performance. I mean, like, like we lost and we didn't score a goal. So, like, it, as good as a performance as you can, given that scenario. But... Um, it, it wasn't it wasn't some alarmingly horrific performance by by really I don't want to say by anybody but like by by the team it, it really wasn't uh, it, it wasn't a, a catastrophic failure of a game it just uh, nobody nobody looked great either you know what I mean it was just kind of it, it was just a meh game I mean it, it really was a I, I don't find any sporting event boring no matter what. I mean, I'm I'm a diehard baseball fan, so everyone can get their chucks in about that. Like, I I, I don't even if it's low scoring or whatever. Like, I, I I'm not gonna find it boring, but it was dull. I mean, it, it was just like very few events ha- happened. Uh, a lot a lot of skating around, and I think the biggest thing, which we talked about last week or this week, earlier this week, was uh, the power play goes 0 for five. And Winnipeg's penalty kill coming into the game was like tied for the worst or like a decimal point better than 32nd. And then now they're like two whole percent up on on the 32nd team because they they went five for five. Yeah, they have a penalty kill percentage of 69.5%. And it's like you said, the second worst in the league by just a couple decimal points. And to have... Five power play opportunities. And yeah, you're the second worst power play in the league. So it's kind of like the movable object. Right, but the, the <laughs> thing is, force, our power but... play was like fifth or sixth worst going into the night. Yeah. And now we are 31st. 
So you can't go over five on the power play, and that continues just to be a problem. You get shut out. You, just... you went over five against one, like comfortably. And one you had of a six on three kills. Yes, you 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 went you went over five against what is like I said, comfortably one of the worst penalty kill units in the entire NHL. And for a minute and 15 seconds, you had a three man advantage. And for the other 45 seconds of that power play, you had a two man advantage. Yeah, not good. Four game losing streak. Hopefully this is not the direction the team's going to take for the rest of the season. Hopefully it's not the beginning of the end. Hopefully not. I mean, with Ned there, we'll be in games. Yes, we'll um, be in games. We'll steal it, games because of Nedalkovich. Right. Uh, and, and again tonight, he he looked fantastic. He really did. Um, but, I, I mean, gosh, like so many offensive zone. The I mean, I think Zid, I think it was Zadina had an offensive zone turnover that led to the second goal. And then we, we had uh, a couple of – defensive zone turnovers that Ned had to do some crazy stuff to, to get our way out of. I mean, it was, there, there were, uh, there were plenty of mistakes this game and, and we did not take advantage of any of Winnipeg's. Yeah. So in the end, God bless Alex and Elkovich for keeping the Red Wings in games. They probably don't deserve to be in Absolutely. Uh, and God best God bless Dylan Larkin for being one of the, you know, consistent forces on the offense. Who's always going to provide yeah. exciting opportunities. And we're going to talk about Dylan Larkin and his election to the all-star team. But first, I got to talk to you guys about Built Bar. It's the new year, right? Uh, new year. So that means New Year's resolutions. If yours is about getting fit or eating healthier, make sure you include Built Bar in your plan. Built Bar is the protein bar that tastes like a candy bar or maybe even better than a candy bar. Built Bar makes it easy to stick to your resolution because it tastes so good you want to eat it, unlike other protein bars, which can be chalky, waxy, or taste like a chemical spill. Chemical spill. Chemical spill. Built Bars are covered in 100% real chocolate, which is why they do not taste like chemical spills. And they also include 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, 4 net carbs, 17 grams of protein. Now, if you compare that with a candy bar, that's normally like 240 calories and 30 grams of sugar. So it's a pretty easy choice, especially when Built Bars are also covered in chocolate. Even if you're not a huge fan of working out, you can at least eat something that tastes good and is good for you. That way, you, when you eat a delicious Built Bar, you can almost count that as a workout. Uh, go to Built.com, use promo code LOCKED15 and get 15% off your order. Use promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at Built.com. .com. All right, Scotty. Uh, Dylan Larkin was named to the All-Star team for the Detroit Red Wings as the Detroit Red Wings representation. Also, happy anniversary to Dylan Larkin. It was his one-year anniversary yesterday on Wednesday, Thursday rather, uh, his one-year anniversary of being named captain. So on the anniversary of being named captain, Ooh. he was named to the All-Star team for his second time in his career. Yeah, awesome. I was uh, I was making uh, Twitter videos. This was before I was on uh, Locked On in any capacity. And I was making a video every day asking the Red Wings to make Larkin captain. It only lasted like four days when they made a captain. <laughs> <laughs> and I obviously had nothing to do with it. Are you sure? I feel like you definitely had to like, I feel like, I, pat, like we got to do this. Or he's definitely not didn't. Uh, <laughs> um, no, it was just like leading up to, cause that, you know, with the weird season last year, that was like leading up to opening night and they didn't announce it until like he was basically on the ice on opening night. Right. Yeah, I mean the the so one I year started like takes place in January, like right. Year. Yeah, I so I started like a, I want to say like a week before opening night. I started it, um, but then, yeah, awesome. And and I, I like how they this year with fans kind of like redid the appreciation thing for it, so that the fans could could acknowledge him and they could play the video and have all the captains come back and everything. That was it was super cool. Very well yeah. done. Well, how do you feel about him being named? Cat or I keep wanting to say name captain. How do you feel about him being named to the All Star team itself? Um, he was among the three candidates the Red Wings had up for uh, to sit, like, for the choice. Nominated is the word. Yeah, it's late, guys. I'm sorry. It's like one in the morning. And I just got off working the Red Wings game. Um, <laughs> they had nominated Cider, Raymond, and Larkin. Out of those three, do you feel like Larkin's the most deserving, or do you think that? Two or three of them, all three of them should have gone. I mean, I'm biased. No, I, 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 I no, I, I think, I think, I think Larkin was the right choice. Um, I, I, I think, I mean, we'll get to Cider when we get to to Raymond and the last man in thing. But 
if you're if you're picking one, I you can't really go wrong with the captain that's averaging over a point a game. He was that, the that sounds good to choice. me. For yeah. sure. He was definitely the easiest choice because of all the things you stated. He's one, he's the captain. He's, he's the, the captain. Face of, face of the franchise. Face of the franchise and has, I mean, the best counting stats. Yeah. Uh, that sounds like a recipe for success to me. Like it, oh. you you couldn't have gone wrong with it, and they didn't go wrong with it. And it's, um, I'm, I'm chill with it. Yeah, I, it, it's fine with me. I do feel as if – so Lucas Raymond, and now the whole roster has been announced. Um, every team has a chance to nominate their last man in. And so there's going to be one more person who's fan voted. Fan voting ends on the 17th. So we have like three days to vote for the last man in. Lucas Raymond was nominated to be the last man in, which, again, another guy I can't argue with. But I can't help but feel like Moritz Sider got a little snubbed in this because the two, there were only two defensemen that were named to the all-star team in Victor Hedman and Rasmus Dahlin. And now I can't really argue the Victor Hedman one because Victor Hedman is insane. It, he's like best of both worlds, defensive defensive defenseman with a scoring touch as well. He's got uh, 38 points in 38 games <laughs> with Tampa Bay this year from defense, which is insane. I feel like he could have put a little bit of heat on Rasmus Dahlin, though. Uh, he's got more points than Darlene in albeit a couple more games, and their possession metrics are very similar, very close. I I just feel like Morris Sider in his rookie year was probably the more exciting player, but with every team needing representation, I feel like that's probably why Buffalo got Rasmus Darlene. Although I don't think there's a limit on how many defensemen you can have. But of course, if you're gonna add more Sider, but keep Darlene and Hedman, you're gonna have to bump a forward out and I'm trying to think. I know the Atlantic Division has a couple teams with extra players. You're looking at either bumping out Tampa Bay's Vasilevsky or Victor Hedman or Toronto's Austin Matthews and Jack Campbell, and neither of that's just neither of that's happening because every team needs representation. Yeah, and and I I think the the thing we kind of talked about before we we started recording was like with the setup of the three on three defensemen are just kind of host i mean like yeah. it's it's really like not 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 too terribly fair for uh for defensemen to and and like obviously there's more forwards than defensemen in in you know in the league uh by a pretty comfortable amount but but i don't know man like that's like that there's there's two in our division and then i i think i i want to say in every other division there's only one defenseman on the entire roster now granted we still have the last man in thing but like i don't know man that, that it seems kind of like if you're a if you're a really really good d man you you just kind of get hosed and it's yeah. like oh yeah well you know we got to get the forwards in there well, so I, I i think that might have more to do with it than than anything else i i don't think with that setup any team is is really going to carry three defensemen like you said uh and if they were to even i mean we got three divisions that are only carrying one at the moment so even to carry two you're you're kind of limiting your your forward group already so i i understand i i completely support and and i'm for the the larkin thing the weird thing to me is raymond getting over cider in the last man in thing that's a little weird to yeah because the team has to nominate that Right. And now Lucas Raymond is still getting points via assists, but it's like a 12, 12 game drought at this point. And I'm not trying to say, oh, Lucas Raymond's bad by any stretch of the imagination. He's still been very good off the puck uh, so far this season, uh, even though he's not scoring goals and still getting, but still getting assists. You know, Morris Sider has consistently been exceeding expectations, which, I mean, the expectations are already pretty high for Morris Sider coming in. Like he has not, his play has not dropped off at all this entire season, whereas with Lucas Raymond, he's gone through a little bit of a scoring drought. Again, still playing at an incredibly high level, but, you know, well, um, let's say instead of drought, you know, Lucas Raymond has slowed down a little bit while Moritz Sider is still chugging along. It does it does raise question marks that Moritz Sider was not the last man in nomination. Not that I'm unhappy with Lucas Raymond being the last man in nomination. I just feel like at this point, Moritz Sider probably deserved it more. But, Again, it comes back to every team needs, even though I think Moritz Sider deserves it more than Rasmus Dahlin, every team needing one rep representative kind of hoses the defenseman because if you already mm -hmm. have Rasmus Dahlin and Victor Hedman going to the All-Star game, you're not going to carry a third defenseman. So if you have your last man in being Moritz Sider, you're not going to make that last man, you're not going to vote for the last man in to be Moritz Sider. It's just, 
I feel like they probably maybe they 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 looked at the field and they were like, we have a better chance with a forward getting voted in mm-hmm. by the fans. I'm sure that's team. what it was, honestly. I'm I mean, like we already talked about the 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 other three divisions are only carrying one. <laughs> So like I, the fact that that ours has two was already uh, uh, more than than what everybody else is carrying as far as defensemen go. So like I, I I'm sure that's what it was. I'm sure it was just a, a calculated um, decision in in what the the best odds to get somebody in were. But uh, it I don't know. Like I it it just kind of sucks to to. I'm sure Cider will will make several All Star games and 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 whatnot, but it it kind of sucks that just the defense we get hosed. I don't know that that kind of that, that's kind of sad. Like he could have a really good season, and they could just be like, oh, well, we're only carrying one D man in our whole division this year, so sorry. Like I don't know that that just kind of that that kind of sucks. Yeah, it's it's just unfortunate. But Dylan Larkin is going to the All Star game, so let's not. Let's not gloss over that. Very much deserving uh, for the Detroit Red Wings. And, you know, we can't have everything go our way every single year. And the Red Wings got one no player kidding. in. <laughs> we got yeah. a guy in the All-Star game. Whoa. So. Whoa. <laughs> no, I'm pumped. Uh, it, it, it was, it was the right decision. Larkin. And, and uh, it's the first time he's been there since his rookie year. Uh, and and I, the funniest thing was – was it two years ago that he literally asked people not to vote for him because he said he needed a break? <laughs> oh, yeah. I think, was, yeah, I think right. that was 19. He was like, yeah, please do not vote for me because <laughs> we were having such a horrible season. He was getting the snob beat out of him, and he was like, I need a break. Please do not vote for me. What an absolute baller thing. To just <laughs> yeah, no, I, guys, I can't. No, I'm good. Please, no. I'm good. Please, thanks. No. Thanks, but no thanks. Yeah, for real. Uh <laughs> Got to talk to you guys today about betonline.ag. Betonline would like to wish you a happy new betting year as we continue our march to the playoffs and beyond. Betonline remains the number one spot for all this best sports wagering for 2022. New year and a new desktop and mobile website. To sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use promo code Locked On to get started. From football, basketball, hockey, boxing, and UFC right to your favorite Vegas casino games. Don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2022 season. BetOnline is the fastest and easiest way to wager on all your favorite sports. BetOnline. BetOnline. All right, Scotty, time for a game preview of the game on Saturday against the Buffalo Sabres. Third time playing the Atlantic Division rival. Dude, they're not really a rival. They're just in the same division. Uh, Red Wings have played them twice so far this season, so we're not unfamiliar with this team, beating them 4-3. to three. At Little Caesars Arena, or I'm sorry, three to two at Little Caesars Arena and four to three in Buffalo, both in overtime. One of them was Moritz Sutter's first career goal was the game winner, and then the other one was Lucas Raymond overtime winner. So I'm noticing a trend here. So probably go to OT. Probably have a game winner from Raymond or Sider or Nadalkovic if we're going off rookies. Joe Valeno. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Did you just suggest that our goaltender was going to score a game winner in overtime? I would love to see how that how, how that would come to fruition. Listen, the scoring's not coming from anywhere else. Nadalkovic <laughs> felt the need to step up, and he came up imagine? in a big way. Can you imagine? He like he like waves and like gets gets a glove on one, and then he's sitting there and he's looking and he's like, nah, like screw this. He just throws the puck on the ice, takes it himself. He looks at his teammates around him and he goes, nah, f it, we ball, and he just we launches ball. it down, <laughs> down he just, the ice. He, he just start. He gets out of the net. He starts skating himself. Everyone's like, what the <laughs> hell is going on? He's just going down the ice. <laughs> Nice little slapper with a goalie stick. I think he has to. I think goalies can't cross the center, the red line, yeah, at center ice. So he'd have center, to fire yeah. it. You so would it count as an icing? Rip. No, it wouldn't be an icing as long as it's on net, right? Yeah, it'd just be. Yeah, if yeah, it's on net, it it's just a shot, ice. man. Yeah. All right, so uh, he's gonna <laughs> go all the way up to the line, and then just let one rip. Yeah. And it's gonna be a nice. It's gonna like 110 miles an hour off the stick. <laughs> banger, top shelf game. So I'm telling you, wow, so we've had Cider, we've had Raymond, and now it's Nadelkovich's turn. 
Yep. No. Nope. That or Joe Valeno. Could, but th- couldn't that's be kind of any sad. other rookie that actually has the chance of scoring. <laughs> it has to be Alexander Nadelkovic. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh. So we talked about how the Winnipeg Jets game was the get right game. And I've lost four in a row, including one at home. Buffalo Sabres are a bad team. I don't want Buffalo to have to keep being the Detroit Red Wings get right game because they were the get right game last time. I remember this uh, because the Red Wings were on a losing streak back then as well. And I was like, oh, Buffalo, perfect team to have a get right game. And they beat them in overtime. And they went on a little bit of a, not a winning streak, but, you know, they got a little hotter. I'm like, I don't want to, I don't want to be like Buffalo is a get right game again. But I mean, it's got to be. It's got to be, Scotty. You cannot lose to Buffalo for five in a row, especially when your next game is, again, they play a home-and-home. Home. Their next game is in Buffalo on Monday. Like, you have two opportunities to snap this losing streak against a bad Buffalo team, and you just – it's it's got to stop. It has got to stop here. It has got to stop here. Do – um who do you think's in that? Keep Nadelkovich going. You think? I mean, he's played great in now three straight hockey games. The last two especially he's been great in. Um, another game. Only one last... day off. No travel, though. Yeah, but he had one day off the night before, you know, before the, the today, uh, last night's game. I mean, that one day off is enough for a starting goaltender as long as he remains healthy. Until he plays bad, keep rolling him out there because he's been playing or really play good. your next back-to-back, yeah. Yeah, and or you play your next back-to-back. I mean, Grice has been... You know, again, the, the game Grice last played on um, Saturday against the Kings where he got absolutely – no, I'm sorry, Sunday against the Ducks. Ducks, yeah. He, he had a bad save percentage, but I don't really blame that on him because the, the Ducks had so many opportunities from inside the slot. Yeah, it was not great. But, I mean, all in all, Nadelkovic has just been the far better goaltender in the entire year. There's no need to put Grice in the net if Nadelkovic is good to go. Yeah, I mean, I agree with you. I, I, I was just more wondering, I don't know, it's a lot of games with only one game off. and, and But, you know, there, there's still, there's no travel, whatever. I, I, I would still throw that out there. I, I, I completely agree with you. It was just kind of in the back of my mind. Um, yeah, no, I mean, this is, this is a, as, as must win as it gets for, for getting the season back on the rails. Um, the, there's not going to be very many, better opportunities than a home game against Buffalo uh, when you're on the heels of a, of a three plus game losing streak. So uh, yeah, this this is uh, this is as, as like the poster child for, for must win. They, they make movies about this and, and how much of a must win game this is. Yeah. Especially when they've had as many goalie issues as they have the Sabres that is, uh, Issues, period. I mean, my goodness. I mean, they've had five goaltenders this season, and only one has played more than 10 games uh, for the team at any point. That's you know, uh, had, that's honestly remarkable. That's un, that's unfathomable. They've had Dennis, uh, Dustin Tor- Tarkarski, Uko, Pekka, Lukonen, Aaron Dell. I remember, I remember what he was like, thought to be like the next big mm-hmm. thing for the, the Sharks. Um, Craig Anderson. Malcolm Subban and only Tokal- Malcolm Tokal- Subban. Tarski, Jesus. Yeah. Uh, has played more than 10 games and he hasn't played since. Hold on now. Hold on. I have it in front of me. I had it in front of me. And then I exited out of the tab like an idiot. Um, he has not played since November 29th. And Malcolm Subban played on the 11th. Craig Anderson hasn't played since November 2nd. Aaron Dell played. To last night in a four to one win against the Predators, and Luke Conan played on the eleventh. So, like, they're they're besides um, Craig Anderson and um, Dustin Torkarski, You know, they're they're doing a rotation of three goaltenders. They've had five on the year. Like, they have had goaltender issues like crazy. And then add on top of it, oh, Malcolm Subban added to uh, his month to month as of January eleventh, and Luke Conan as of the 10th, is week-to-week week with a lower body in this, uh, injury. So, who's their goaltender? <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's Aaron Dell. I mean, process of elimination, yeah. right? It kind of has to be. I mean, he played last night and got the 4-1 win against Nashville. But, so, they've had 
five goalies. Two are injured, and the other two haven't played since November. So, Brian, please tell me how the Red Wings have done this year against teams with horrible goalie situations. I mean, I, I don't remember the off the top horrible. of my head. No, we, but... have we, have we, we get shut out by a random AHL backup making as long his as debut it, every night. But that's just it. As none of these goalies are making their debut, so we're fine. Oh, so we're fine. All right. We're fine. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair I enough. Just, it, I'm just, I was just pointing out the facts. I was literally opening up tabs. I'm like, when was the last time each of these five goalies has played? Because this is ridiculous. They've had five different goalies in that so far this season because they've been so banged up. Um, they also are probably going to still be missing. Uh, Tage Thompson could be uh, back um, on the game to, on Saturday because he went on COVID-19 on the 9th. So it would be have been five days. So they're just... The Sabres are just a bad team who have all kinds of goaltender issues. So you gotta take it's, advantage. It's an opportunity. You have you gotta to. take advantage. I mean, what else is there to say? I mean, you have the better hockey team than the Buffalo Sabres. You've beat them twice in overtime. You lost four straight. Like you, you gotta win here, Scotty. At least take to. one of the, my expectations are now down to take one of the next two against Buffalo. <laughs> just get a win at some point against Buffalo to get a win just for the Please. sake of winning. Please, please win a hockey game. Please. It's amazing how like sad and upset I get when they get on losing streaks. Remember when they went on their first trip out west, not the like on the Cali, the Cali trip, but when they went to Columbus, then Nashville, to Dallas, then to Arizona, and they lost all four of those games. Mm -hmm. And we were just like, oh my goodness. Like it's that seems been streaky this year. Very streaky. It's definitely a step forward. And and I will never I will never say to the otherwise, the opposite. But these 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 losing streaks, man, they hurt. They hurt so bad. They do. Not not great, especially when you just literally can't score. Yeah, quite literally cannot score. I mean, how many goals in the past few games? So they got shut out by the Kings, which was four nothing. And shut they out sh- tonight. Shut out tonight, three nothing. So that's seven to zero. And then it was three to two overtime against the Ducks. Yep. So that's ten to two, and then was it three to two again to the Sharks? Uh, or was one of those four to three? I think one of those was four to three. I don't remember what, what I had for breakfast this morning. The, yeah, this is what happens when you record at one thirty at night, people. <laughs> Either way, the Red Wings have scored at at the minimum or our, maximum uh, our, five goals in the last old, four uh, years. Our old friend Nolan put out a stat, and he said since the five-game winning streak in December, we are, I believe it was 3-8-2 and two, and have been outscored 50-30 to 30 in that 13-game stretch. Mm. <laughs> so, great stat by Nolan, but a sad one. Very, very sad one. Scotty, on that just bright note, do you have any <laughs> final thoughts? Um, what show was Ron Artest in? Arrested Development. <laughs> You're so funny. What a I know, back. man. I know I am. It's crazy. Uh, we ball. That's it. My final thought is just win a hockey game. Just win, just win a, a hockey freaking game. hockey game. Uh, I want to make you. I want to thank you guys for making Lockdown Red Wings your first listen every day. Now make your second listen to Lockdown Bets your daily one stop shop for all your gambling needs. A lockdown bet hosted by your boy Q with expert analysis and, and insight from Lee Sterling. It's free and available on all platforms. Uh, we'll be back on Monday with a game recap of the Buffalo Sabres and a game preview of the Buffalo Sabres. Interesting. I don't think I've ever done that before for these home and homes. Uh, Wait, when's, time, the, when's the Buffalo game? It's on Monday. Oh. So okay. we can actually do a game preview. Oh, that, yeah. Buff- <laughs> we do a recap, recap preview. Buffalo preview Buffalo. Let's ride, baby. We ball. Uh, Same time, same place. It's your team every day. Every day. I'm going to bed.